Okay, in this video I'm going to demonstrate how to carry out a factorial analysis of covariance using SPSS. The demonstration entails uh, these four vi uh, variables right here. We have two fixed factors which are basically the independent variables within the model. Um, we have a single dependent variable which is post-test knowledge. It's a scale variable and we're going to be including uh, a single covariate within the model which is uh, pretest knowledge. So taking a quick look at the intervention variable, we have three levels, control group, treatment A, and treatment B. For gender identification, we have two levels, male and female. So let's run our analysis. So we'll go to Analyze, General Linear Model, Univariate. We'll move our two uh, independent variables, our fixed factors, over to the fixed factors box. We'll move post-test knowledge to the dependent variable box, and we'll move pretest knowledge to the covariates. Obviously, I'm using a single covariate here, but this would certainly extend uh, to uh, a, a situation where you have multiple covariates. Next, we'll click on options. We'll click on descriptives, effect size, typically power, uh, and then homogeneity tests. Next, we'll click continue, and then EM means. This is estimated marginal means. And just so you know, uh, I'm working off of uh, SPSS version 25. In previous editions, the, uh, the, uh, the uh, estimated marginal means fell underneath the options tab. But in this current version, they're separated under different tabs. So we're going to move this over. If you want to carry out post hoc analyses uh, for, in this case, our intervention variable, we can't use the standard post hoc uh, options box right here. So uh, we can't do that, but we can obtain post hoc tests another way by clicking on compare main effects, use the drop down, and we can use, uh, for instance, the Bonferroni um, adjustment to carry out uh, Bonferroni adjusted post hoc tests. We'll click continue under plots. We can move uh, intervention over to the horizontal axis and gender identification over separate lines. Click add and you have two options for chart types. You have line chart and bar chart. Uh, I'm going to click on bar chart for right now and then we'll click on uh, include error bars here. So continue and then on OK and so you'll notice first that we have descriptive statistics. These are unadjusted uh, cell means. Uh, so, in other words, uh, the means are unadjusted for the presence of the covariate within the model. Um, the adjusted um, means are found below under the estimated marginal means. And so you can see uh, that all of these tables has, uh, you know, reference to uh, the fact that, uh, you know, the means are computed after controlling for the covariate within the model. The Levine's test is interpreted the same way that you typically would. Uh, if this is non-significant, that would indicate that um, that you have uh, no evidence or, or uh, there's no evidence, at least according to the test, of uh, violation of homogeneity of variances, and that is relevant for interpreting the uh, ANCOVA results below. So the test of between subjects effects, we see that we have uh, our main effect for intervention, main effect for gender identification, and then also the intervention by gender identification interaction. So you can see um, and then we, right here, this is our covariate within the model. So, you know, looking at uh, each of these, we can say that, you know, the intervention effect that we see right here, uh, that is the main effect for intervention. It's statistically significant, controlling for the other variables within the model. Gender identification is not significant, so there's no significant main effect for gender identification. And then there's no significant interaction uh, between intervention and gender identification. Uh, within the model. We do see that pretest knowledge uh, scores uh, that it would be you know kind of near significance uh, at the 0 0.05 level. So scrolling down, uh, as I said before, the estimated marginal means that you're getting right here are adjusted group means. We have next the pairwise comparisons uh, and so these are essentially Bonferroni adjusted multiple comparisons comparing um, the three groups um, against each other in terms of their adjusted group means. So we have control group versus treatment A. There's the mean difference and it's statistically significant. Control versus treatment B. There's the mean difference and it's significant. Treatment A versus treatment B. And uh, there's the mean difference and significance. So you can see, you know, again, just kind of descriptively right here, you can see treatment A uh, adjusted mean is greater than that for the control group and treatment B. And those tests are down here under pairwise comparisons. When we scroll down a little bit further, you can see that we have our profile plot. 
um, you know, and the bars, uh, the height of the bars are, are associated with the means or the adjusted group means. And you can see that for males and females that there's not really much difference uh, between them in the in the uh, uh, different groups. So in the control group or A, a or B, there's not really much in the way of a difference. And that's uh, that makes total sense because as we saw up here, uh, there was no significant interaction effect. Um, if there had been a significant interaction effect, we may have wanted to uh, then carry out simple effects tests in addition to interpreting um, our profile plot. And so to do that, we can go to uh, Analyze, General Linear Model, Univariate. And after we specified everything, we can click on Paste. And when we do that, this box is going to come up. And what we'll uh, want to draw our eye to is uh, uh, the uh, estimated marginal means command right here with tables for the interaction. And it says with pretest knowledge. And this is basically uh, incorporating the covariate. Um, so at any rate, what we're going to do in this particular case is add a compare command. So let's say that I want to compare uh, the intervention groups by gender. So to do that, I can just type in compare and then the name of the variable, which is intervention. Uh, put that in, in, uh, in uh, parentheses. And then I can also add an, a Bonferroni adjustment just by typing in ADJ and then B Bonferroni. Okay, so, and you can see that uh, that's what we got above when we asked for those von Veroni adjusted um, pairwise comparisons. So now when we highlight and click on the green button, uh, we get everything that is exactly the same as before, but now when we scroll down, you'll see that we get our estimates um, and then our pairwise comparisons right here for male, female gender identification, and then we have the comparisons between uh, control group and treatment A, there's a difference. A and B, uh, there's a, a significance as well. So these are the mean differences um, between uh, the different groups at uh, for the males. And then uh, there's A versus B right here. There's the difference. And all three of those were significant, which is not surprising. Uh, and then for females, when we have the same, uh, same sort of circumstance right here, there's the mean difference, significant. Um, when we're con comparing the control group versus A, when we compare control group versus B, uh, there's the difference, but it actually turns out that wasn't significant here. And then we have A versus B right here, and there's the difference in significance. So that's um, basically how you can do that. Uh, we could have just as easily uh, opted for a different approach, which is to compare uh, males and females at each level of, um, of gender. So if we do that right there um, and highlight, oops, then uh, t turns out that uh, actually when I ran that, I did not use the correct name. So let me fix that. It was not gender, it was gender ID. So let me fix that right there. And we'll rerun it, highlight, and run. And so now when we scroll down, you can see that we have um, our pairwise comparisons. You can see the intervention, so the levels of intervention, control group, treatment A, treatment B, male versus female in the control group, no difference. Uh, male versus female in the uh, treatment A group, no difference, and male versus female in the treatment B, no group, uh, excuse me, no difference as well. So um, that's just another option. Uh, also, just kind of to round this out, I'll show you what uh, the plot would look like if we used the line chart. So we'll click on that, continue, and then on OK, and running the analysis with that, this is what it looks like right here. Just keep in mind that uh, the lines are not representing any kind of trend or anything of that nature. Our independent variable is nominal, so it wouldn't make sense to kind of interpret it along those lines. But you can still see, uh, you know, this is kind of reflecting the difference between um, the control group and treatment A for the two groups. So that comparison there, and then uh, treatment A versus B with that comparison there. So um, that concludes this uh, short demonstration.